Your monthly subscription box from PostFlyBox.com includes all the materials needed to tie a dozen flies, along with some extra goodies. This Hendrickson Nymph has proven itself to be remarkably effective, mainly because it so closely matches the naturals. Even so, the fly should not be discounted as an attractor pattern that can be used any time of the year, even when Hendrickson nymphs aren't in abundance or active. Start by inserting the point of one of the hooks into the small hole of one of the beads and working the bead up the hook shank to behind the eye. You can then get the assembly firmly secured in the jaws of your tying vise. Load a bobbin with the spool of black unithread and get it started on the hook shank at the back edge of the bead. Take a few wraps rearward before snipping off the excess tag. Return your thread forward to the bead. Solder wire is used to add weight so the fly sinks quickly. Insert the wire into the back end of the bead on top of the hook shank and take a few thread wraps to secure it. Start taking touching wraps with the wire behind your tying thread, kind of pushing the thread up as you go. Five or six turns should be plenty. Use your tying thread to anchor the wire to the top of the hook shank, then simply pull up on the wire to break it off close. Take a few more thread wraps over top of the wire wraps to smooth them out and to make sure everything's bound down well. Lemon mallard flank is used for the tail and legs of the fly. After stripping the fuzzy fibers from the lower part of the stem, get hold of the feather's very tip and gently preen down the fibers on either side to expose that tip. This is what you're going to use for the tail of the fly. Snip the tip off, then pick it up and measure to form a tail about a hook shank in length. Transfer that measurement rearward to the start of the hook bend. Use your tying thread to anchor the fibers on top of the shank, first back to the start of the bend, then forward up to the wire wraps. Copper wire is used to rib and segment the body of the fly. A five inch length will make numerous flies. Butt one end of the wire against the solder wire wraps and take wraps of tying thread to secure it, first to the near side of the hook, then allow it to get pushed to the far side. Return your tying thread to the back edge of the solder wire. Pull a small amount of dark brown dubbing free from the packet and use it to create a slender two inch long noodle on your tying thread. Start taking wraps with the noodle so the dubbing begins right at the base of the tail. Then, take touching wraps forward to form the abdomen of the fly. End with your tying thread about halfway between the back edge of the bead and the base of the tail. Now, pull just the smallest amount of tan dubbing from the packet and use it to create a very short, slim noodle on your tying thread. Take wraps with the noodle to create the light-colored portion of the body found on most natural Hendrickson nymphs. Get hold of the copper wire and start making open spiral wraps with it over top of the body to rib and segment the fly. When you reach your tying thread, use it to anchor the wire, then brace the fly with the nozzle of your bobbin and helicopter the wire to break it off close. Reposition your tying thread so it sits about a bead length behind the back edge of the bead. Pick up one of the segments of black rubber band and stretch it a bit. Give your bobbin a good clockwise spin to cord up and strengthen the thread. Lay one end of the rubber band on top of the hook shank and take thread wraps to secure it really well. You're going to be stretching the band quite a bit and you don't want it pulling out. From the packet of brown dubbing, pluck a smaller clump than you did before and use it to once again create a fairly short, slender noodle on your tying thread. Start taking wraps with the noodle to fill in the area behind the bead and to build up the thorax of the fly. With your thread at the back edge of the bead, pull the rubber band forward and take wraps to bind it down really well. Once it's firmly anchored, pull up on the material and with it under tension, snip the excess off close. Locate the same mallard feather you use for the tail. It should look something like this. While keeping the tips roughly aligned, snip free the remaining fibers from one side of the stem, then smush them together into a clump. Place this clump against the near side of the hook so the tips extend a little more than halfway down the body of the fly, and take a couple of thread wraps to hold it in place. You can then snip the excess butt ends off close. Don't sweat it if some of the butt ends stick out just a little bit. Now pick up what remains of the mallard feather and snip the other side off 
and once again, while keeping the tips aligned, form a little bundle of fibers. Place the bundle on the far side of the hook in line with the one on the near side and take thread wraps to secure it. You should end up with roughly equal length legs on both sides of the fly. You can then carefully snip those butt ends off close as well. Finally, reach for your whip finish tool and use it to do a five or six turn whip finish behind the bead, seat the knot well, and snip your tying thread free. And that's the Hendrickson Nymph. Remember, it can be fished effectively throughout the year, not just during the hatch. Thank you.